Here is the STM32 interfacing with W5500 Ethernet featuring UDP protocol. SPI is the bridge between the STM and module with TTL for debugging. W5500 Ethernet's vendor was Net has a TCP IP stack and you can go to the datasheet to know more. To interface with it you get to the software library which includes socket API, configuration, module files, and some common applications of TCP slash UDP server and client once you download it from here. I already downloaded before so now go to the downloads folder in your PC, extract it. The library supported different Ethernet modules but let's explore the WizNet library and find our W5500 module. In Ethernet folder find W5500 folder copy the two files and delete the other modules. In addition it comes with a manual reference of socket API which you find all socket functions, states and software register it very helpful actually when you build your project and never get lost. After that select all the files we discussed before. Addition to loopback files which are some common examples of TCP slash UDP it's not mandatory to include but it is good practice to have a reference to get back when developing your application. After everything has been done, let's add those in your project. I use STM32 cube ID for developing the application after setting up everything let's explore the files. First loopback C file which has the TCP protocol implementation of the server and client with guided steps and UDP protocol server. You may or may not follow on with it, but at least is work so if your application not working don't blame STM. The header file has some macros like buffer size and function prototypes. After that socket files which has socket API implementation and software. Registers like status, data and so on. W5500 files are hardware dependent and have all the functions to send or receive data from the module to the target and header files supported with protocol choice. WizChip underscore CONF files are responsible for linking the physical layer with the network layer and initializing the module physically and header file has the most important macro which is module selection. Make sure you select W5500. Now let's configure the bridge bet the module and target which is SPI set up his prescaler, phase, data order, polarity, data mode, and assign the target as master and module to be slave, with SPI master send and receive data from slave either in bytes or string of bytes. And selecting the chip from the GPIO pin, with chip use the main SPI read write function and extract from its small function for specific function either read or write so till now everything looks good with the SPI. Now let's initialize the W5500, first reserve a space in memory for the module socket, which has 8 sockets each socket has TX and RX, after setting the chip select the GPIO pin, and reset the W5500 reset pin then wait a few cycles as required in the datasheet. After that reset the chip select GPIO pin. Use with chip callback functions to link controller SPI with module then check the initialization of the chip. If it is connected it will print out in our TTL serial and if not it print fail. Connection and going to infinite loop. In our main UDP application, first, assign the receive buffer length and make it suitable for the data you receive from the server. First, create a string to be transmitted from client to server. So how we can know the IP address of the server which is in our case is our PC. First press Windows key and type CMD and type this command IP protocol configuration and it will show your network IP address and gateway and subnet and all needed information. So here we assign the server IP with the PC IP and the destination port is one of the most important parameters in UDP connection because UDP doesn't need a defined client to establish the connection as the server will send or receive data from the client without any integrity that the data has reached their destination or the client connected to the server or not. That's why UDP faster than TCP that's why is used in video streaming. Apart from that let's configure the client which in our case is the STM32. First assign the IP address by choice with that and another parameter like the server parameters subnet, gateway, and assign a valid MAC address. Let's deep into the application first initialize the system, set up the clock and cystic timer. Serial debugging URT3 and SPI. Initialize the W5500 module and assign the client network parameters. Here to check the existence of the Ethernet cable by physical layer API and see if it is connected or not and everything it will show on the serial debugging monitor. If the stage is passed we will extract some network information about our connection about the type of configuration and even if it half or full duplex and whether the auto negotiation is enabled or not and get the speed of the connection and everything will be printed in our serial. Use socket API to connect with the W5500 module which has four parameters socket number mode of connection, destination port, and status flag. I choose socket 1, UDP protocol mode, and destination port, 
if the return value is 1 so the socket created successfully otherwise it will go to infinite loop and all that is shown on the serial. Here our super loop app first receives a packet from the server, prints it out in our serial, then wipes out the buffer we received to distinguish the new data and not carry old data and by the end at a small delay between each iteration. UDP receive function which require pointer to the buffer. First start sending some data packet like string by send API to the server. It will be transmitted to the server over and over and in that case the client will wait for any receiving data come from the client. So expect the output to be string over and over but if the server send data to client it received by receive from API which require four parameters socket number, buffer, packet length, destination IP address and port and it will return the packet length. Store it in buffer and in that case I put a lead indicator to flush when the data packet receiving and end the packet with null character to terminate the string. That's just a quick overview you need to go the socket API and software registers to see how the packet transmitted and receiving which part I'm not covering here. Finally the main point here to extract information from the packet that's might be used in other phase of our application. So you need to implement a function to extract numbers from packets. With small delay and serial messages it's quite beneficial to trace your code and be careful and require data type size to avoid truncation or overflow. Now you might have a general knowledge and overview about how the application is supposed to happen. Let's set the environment to see it in action. Connect the STM32 debugger and TTL USB. Open the Docklight serial monitor and STM32 cube IDE and socket test. Set up the Docklight to have 9600 baud rate. No parity check. 8 bits data one stop bits, and full duplex. Select the TTL COM number. In the socket test choose the UDP mode and in the server window type the server IP address which is in our case is the PC IP address and port to 4000. In the client window type the STM32 IP address which assigned to W5500 and the same port which is 4000. Download the code in our STM by STM debugger. Before starting you have to make sure that the connection is on. Go to CMD and ping the client IP address. It will send dummy packets, and if the PC receiving, it will connect successfully. Let's run everything together. Now the server is bending with the destination port. Start the serial monitoring right away it will print the state of the connection, and if so it will print the parameters of the connection. First, you will see the send OK string in the serial indicating that the packet is transmitting but without any integrity that the packet has reached its destination. You see the string in the server windows over and over so client to server is done. Another term server to the client here all you need to do to transmit the packet from the client message in the socket test and the message will show up in the socket test terminal which has been transmitted. And in the serial you get receive OK string to indicate the receiving packet has been receiving and it will print it out in the serial and only here the lead will flush for few time. The point here is UDP is no check of integrity that packet is transmitting. I trace the packets by send OK. And receive OK serial strings but that UDP is fast even more than TCP for example which has his application which is video streaming. I will simulate the idea by Hercules terminal. For example, I have a GPS sensor frame and the server will act as a sensor sending a continuous data frame to the controller and I receive that frame and extract the information from it. There is an option in terminal called UDP broadcast which is a file require the client IP address, destination port, and subnet mask and finally the data. I put the GPS messages in the broadcast file and save it. Remember you have to be in the server bending state. Not in the listening state to be able to transmit the data to the client. Now open the terminal and socket test to see everything in action. Upload the broadcast file in the terminal and start sending the GPS frame as server to the client as shown. You receive the GPS from the server and now is printing in our serial and LED flushing but keep in mind to wipe out the buffer to avoid data collisions as discussed before. In other words in UDP, you cannot have two servers but you may have multiple clients here I have a socket test, and Hercules act as two servers and the two can't be in the listening state. You got it to be one listening and other bending but socket test has some priority over Hercules for a reason I don't know but you got the idea. With this method, you can simulate a database server that has important information to be used in the application to drive a unit, or provide the timing required, and so on. Hope you get general knowledge about it. You will find the code below to see how everything works. Goodbye and good night.